I'd like to thank you all for coming today. Um, I would like to introduce uh, the co-chair of the scholarship committee, the president of the World Securities, uh, Mr. Satoshi Kawamura. So we have, uh, let's see, the numerous uh, applicant, application from uh, highly uh, qualified candidates. Each was unique story of perseverance and passion and determination. And our selecting for the selection, so our committee had a very uh, challenging uh, task for choosing the recipients. But uh, ultimately, uh, we are inspired by the impressive accomplishments and the ambitions of our audience. So they are indeed what the JAA scholarships stand for. Intelligent, innovative, and committed individuals and who will undoubtedly uh, leave a lasting mark in their uh, each chosen field, now and in the future. And good evening. Friends, everybody here. I'm delighted and actually honored to be here for JEA's 54th scholarship dinner to meet the young student awardees and members of the JEA community. Uh, May has been a very busy month for everybody, everybody. parades, art exhibitions, school finals, work, uh, work project, the list goes on. As we pause and take a breath, uh, this award ceremony in turn breathes new life into us by showing us a great potential of the next generation and our collective power in supporting them through this community and new contribution to the strong partnership between our two nations. Please enjoy the evening and by many, my best wishes to you all. Thank you. Hi, good evening. I'm Satoru Moranzi, co-chair of uh, the Yaro Dinner. And good to see the awardees again. We did a little bit of a, most of you I met, we met uh, Zoom-wise uh, a few days ago, and it was really wonderful to meet the awardees after reading their impressive uh, resumes and recommendations. Uh, and it was actually even more impressive to actually meet you all in person, but thank you very much. Now, I have the great personal uh, honor and uh, pleasure of introducing uh, Sayaka Kobayashi. Um, the one thing that's good about being co-chair of the dinner is, is that you have this sort of right to uh, pick or have a little bit heavier vote on who's going to be the keynote speaker. And we have keynote speakers who have been senators, uh, officials, CEOs, uh, very famous people in many different areas. Uh, but why Sayaka came to mind was that her whole life, which is a part of a, a, a multi-million sales book in Japan, and also a movie, which I, I think I sent to, uh, the clip I sent to many of you, and I'll send it to anybody who wants the uh, clip online, uh, because uh, the one thing about the Giri Garu, which uh, uh, Deputy Council General in the mentioned, is a very, very famous um, a character, and also it describes something that's very interesting in Japan because as you know, Japan has, is a very educationally based society and it's very, very competitive to get into college. And in Sayaka's case, at least from the book, and I, I haven't asked you, asked you in person, but in, from the book and from the movie, she was basically told in high school that you're not gonna go to college. And uh, because uh, you, the Bidi Gana thing was like, you're a party girl. And, 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 it's, and it's talking about in Japan about labels and overcoming labels and being a challenger. And she's a real challenger because she studied, she overcame, um, I, I, you could say, uh, preconceptions, and she got into Keio University. So that, that's wonderful, and uh, that's a great story. It was, I enjoyed the movie many times. Uh, but then, for some strange reason, I'm, frankly, because after I went to college, I didn't really want to go to graduate school, she basically um, you know, makes a, a good living, has savings, and she basically doubles her TOEFL score uh, to apply to Columbia University, and she also paid for it herself. <laughs> so, 
And she basically just graduated this month with an education degree from Teachers College. And I think that talking to her and her motivation is to help other students like herself who had challenges, who had preconceptions to overcome those obstacles. And I thought that actually, this is actually her first uh, major speech in English, which is another challenge I presented to her. Um, I mean, it was really, it, it, the first time I met her was through my wife, and I said, uh, you know, when I first uh, was introduced to you, I said, well, I don't know if I want to meet Bidi Yadu because I, I don't know, it's, it's like a celebrity, but she's a very, very determined, serious, My real name is Sayaka Kada. Uh, Kobayashi is a name that I use for media appearances, so please call me Sayaka. And first of all, congratulations on being selected as JAA Scholarship recipients. Um, as you embark on uh, the new journey of learning, I would like to share some words uh, with, of celebration and encouragement with you. Um, First, I wanna I wanna apologize for my English skill. I know this is not enough for this honorable role, but I just started learning. Uh, um, as he said, um, I started learning English four years ago under the COVID nineteen pandemic uh, to make my uh, dreams of studying abroad come true. And so. When it comes and um, when it comes to um, like in terms of, uh, in English, I'm like four year old kid, so <laughs> be patient. <laughs> but I work really really hard. I studied English like crazy. Like I, I took the TOEFL test more than twenty times in a year. <laughs> I paid a lot for the company, <laughs> ETS or something. Yeah, then. Then I uh, ha somehow I managed to get into uh, Columbia University's graduate program and studying cognitive science in education for two years. And I recently graduated from there. And now I'm here and I'm doing studying. I'm standing on this prestigious uh, stage and giving my um, lecture, not lecture, a small talk <laughs> in English, so I'm doing a great job. <laughs> I'm so proud of my <laughs> And yeah, anyway, let me tell you about who I am. Um, has anyone here seen the movie Bidi Garu? English, uh, English title is Flying Colors. Ah, ah, thank you. So many people. Ah, thank you so much. Did you enjoy it? Ah, thank you. <laughs> and if you are interested in this movie, you can watch it uh, on YouTube with English subtitle, which is illegal, but <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, I will be happy if you watch the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and the, the, the movie is based on my life. And the title Bidi Garu uh, came from uh, comes from uh, two Japanese words. Bidi, which means uh, the lowest, the bottom, and Garu, which refers to uh, how should I say, trendy, rebellious young women or something. <laughs> yeah. When I was in middle and high school. I was completely Bidigaru. I didn't study at all. And I didn't follow any ridiculous school rules. Like <laughs> <laughs> requiring my scarf to be at least 10 centimeters below the knee and <laughs> forcing us to wear um, unattractive, uh, <laughs> unattractive school designated cardigans or uh, prohibiting any makeup or dyeing hairs or something like that. I couldn't get them. I couldn't understand why we have to study or why we have to follow that kind of silly rules. And then, as you may know, some Japanese people are really good at following um, seemingly meaningless rules, but I was not one of them. So that's why I was almost expelled from the school. 
and the principal of the junior high school told me that you're a piece of shit. Or, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, and you're a disgrace of my school, or something like that. And I didn't like them. I, I, I didn't like that kind of adults who judge me by my grades or my appearance. And I was all totally uh, hopeless about that kind of adults or world and my own life. But everything changed. Uh, in my second year of high school, when I met my crown school teacher. Do you know crown school? Juku? Yeah, the Juku are places where students study for entrance examinations uh, after the regular schools. And I had no plan to go to university. Uh, graduation from high school was enough for me at the time. But I went to the crown school um, meeting Instead, instead of my young brother, um, he he was like, I'm not gonna go there. So uh, uh, my mom asked me to go there to, uh, instead of my my brother, and that's why I met my mentors. He was he he was the first educator who didn't judge me from by my test scores or appearances. And he listened to my story with genuine interest. And even he laughed with me. I was so happy that I almost cried. And I, I was like, OK, if there are some kind of adults like him, my life or this world wasn't so bad after all. So that's why I started, um, I decided to start, start studying very hard to enroll in uh, Keio University. And Keio University is um, one of Japanese top universities. And everyone, everyone said, except for my mom and my mentor, everyone said to me like, it's gonna be impossible for you because you're too stupid. <laughs> and you're better off giving up, giving up on the, that kind of, that, that too ambitious goal, but I kept believing myself and my mentor, and I kept working so hard. And then I achieved my goal. I got into Keiwa University. Then guess what? So many people started saying like, ah, oh, I knew it. <laughs> you, your DNA must be amazing, or right? you are originally talented, or something like that, which is so annoying. And and. Seven years later, my mentor wrote about my story on his blog, and it went viral. And it was later published as a book and sold over one million copies. And in 2015, uh, it turned into a movie that became a huge hit in Japan and in China. And since then, I started receiving a lot of requests to speak children, to speak to children. And I've given more than 500 times, 500 talks so far. And during these kind of educational activities, I noticed something. Japanese children lack self-confidence and self-esteem. And they would say something like, Sayaka-san, you're originally talented. You must be smart. I'm not smart. I cannot do that. I could never do that. And surprisingly, their parents and teachers said the same thing in front of them. My kids are stupid. I'm, I don't think they're going to be able to do the same thing as you did. These kind of strong beliefs affect how well people perform. And of course, it changed everything, the result or outcomes, right? That's why I came to here, came here to study cognitive science. I just wanted to understand scientifically I why I changed so much and how I managed to keep working so hard. And I think, I believe, environment is a key uh, for success. 
Um, I don't think it's a stretch to say that um, mindset and words used by adults around them can determine their kids' future. Japanese children lack confidence because they are often focused on what they cannot do over what they can do. They are always compared to others and they're always here to um, negative feedback or negative words from their parents or teachers who are raised in a culture that value uh, modesty, but at the same time emphasizing perfection. Um, despite having such a beautiful culture and the highest level of hospitality or skills and even diligence in the world, they don't rec even recognize it. When I came here, New York City, I was like, oh my God, this is the opposite of Japan. <laughs> People here are so confident, sometimes too confident. <laughs> <laughs> no one cares about me, no one cares about others, no one, care, uh, no one judge me, no one compare themselves with others. I know every culture has its pros and cons, but being here makes me feel like this is much easier to live. And I like this. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so like being here changed my everything perspective. Um, so like here, I have a request for all of you um, be role models for the kids and become inspiring adults uh, who can make them feel like I want to be like that. I want to be like that. Um, because I'm not asking you like become a billionaires or um, Olympians or win big hours, just be yourself. Um, do what you want. Um, spend time with the people who you want to be with. And find and know yourself to lead yourself. That's, what, that's exactly what Japanese children admire and aspire to. The essence of education lies in aspiration, I think. Um, like Japanese, Japanese children should know there are so many people living freely and who being who they are. And yeah, so I, can, can I Cheat on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I memorized all of them. <laughs> yeah, so. Wait. Uh, wait. I forgot that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we all have the ability to learn by myself. So we don't need uh, someone who teach us everything, right? But we do need motivation to work, learn more or grow. And so having a role model can be the most powerful motivation. I want to leave you with some advice. Uh, first, and again, meet so many in interesting and inspira inspiring adults. And the Japanese word for human, ningen, is made up of a person and between, right? Symbolizing we, are, we human being is living in the con uh, connections with between people. So the people who um, 
people you need, uh, the relationship you built with them uh, is so crucial. Um, so go out and try to meet uh, the people who inspire and excite you. And second, regularly step out of comfort zone. Uh, there are said to be two types of uh, happiness. One is hedonic well-being, which comes from positive emotions like joy or uh, fun and the absence of negative emotions like uh, sadness uh, or uh, discomfort or anger. Like for example, laying on the beach in Miami and with uh, plenty of time and money and watching Netflix, this is exactly hedonic well-being. <laughs> that the moment you're feeling like, oh, this is the best, I love this, I'm so happy, this is hedonic well-being, right? But I'm sure you will get bored with this soon. And Aristotle said, hedonic well-being alone cannot bring the true happiness. And that's where the other one, eudaimonic well-being, comes, comes in, which is that fulfillment and satisfaction uh, that you can get from self uh, personal growth or self actualization or realization using your abilities and so to be truly happy we have to challenge my, uh, ourselves sometimes and additionally hedonic well-being can last in a short term but eudaimonic well-being uh, is long lasting and build up your inner strengths. So in even in small ways, please try to step out of your comfort zone intentionally sometimes. And